And I'm going to tell the people who are in our... Okay, and Sally, you didn't get to see that, that I have my friend Rose here. Mm -hmm. Hi, Rose. Hi. She's going to help with the technical stuff. She's also curious about this whole thing. Oh, do I have to hit save? You have to click in there. Oh, and here's the mouse. Okay. But you didn't I, say I, anything. I you did. Didn't? Yes. I hit return. It's up there now. Oh. Okay. Sorry about that. So, everybody, in uh, in this panel and also out in cyberspace, if anybody's watching now or sometime in the future. Um, my name is Jane Wild, and I run a computer consulting business uh, working with schools, and I also teach at Marlboro College Grad School. And it would be great if the rest of you introduce yourself, and why don't we start with Seth, just to make this organized? Sure. Uh, my name is Seth Bonnet. Uh, I teach at Manchester Elementary Middle School uh, in Manchester, Vermont. Uh, and I'm currently a uh, technology integration teacher, um, and that's what I do. So K through K through eight, uh, and I do Minecraft with right now fifth through eighth graders, and we're going to start, I think, after the holiday break, starting with some fourth graders because there's lots of interest. Cool. Um, we want to hear more about that in a moment. Sally, can you introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Sally Visacchio, and I'm a tech integration specialist for the Southwest Vermont Supervisory Union. And um, I work with grades K through 6. Thanks. Mike? I'm Mike Beardsley, and I work at Putney Central School as a grade 4 teacher, and I have just started up a Minecraft EDU server and ready to roll with it. Great. Karen? Um, I'm Karen Perry from People's Academy High School. And um, I'm the Pathways Coordinator. Uh, but what I do with Minecraft is I run an uh, after school Minecraft club. Great. For middle schoolers. Excellent. So uh, I see that we have Tony and Don. Um, and I'm hoping some other people will join us in today's meet. If anybody is watching the broadcast but doesn't know where we're chatting, it's todaysmeet.com forward slash VT Minecraft. VT as in Vermont. So my intention for tonight is to ask each of you um, or ask the group in general four pretty general questions. What, what each of us is doing or intending to do with Minecraft, how we see Minecraft supporting after school and in school projects, uh, what the difference is between the edu version, what a bucket server is, that sort of thing, and then finally um, how might the five of us and the rest of us support the 22 educators who have expressed interest in Minecraft um, in Vermont. And I want you to know that there is a sixth panelist who will be joining us in about 10 minutes. Uh, Susan Breer actually called us from the road and uh, Karen and I thought that was a little unsafe. <laughs> so once she gets off the road, she's going to join us, I hope. Um, so it, it, because five people in a voice call can be a little chaotic, uh, would you, if you want to speak, would you raise your hand or wiggle your hand or something? And, uh, and I'm going to... I don't know. And also, feel free to take me off course. This is just my intention, but we can do whatever anybody wants to. And I'm assuming that we'll answer these four questions fairly quickly, and then you can talk. Just we can just talk amongst ourselves and also respond to questions um, 
that people who are watching ask. Sound okay? Sounds good. It, Sounds good. Yeah. I can't you? tell you where the bathroom is because I don't know where it is in your place. <laughs> it's over that way. <laughs> how do you um, t get into the chat? Because I, I see the chat, but I'm looking. So how do I print into the chat? Open, I would recommend opening a different window because the, the chat that you're seeing on the side mm -hmm. is just the chat between the five of us. And um, I don't think we're going to be using that. But the chat in a different window is at todaysmeet.com forward slash VT Minecraft. Is that today's with a capital or the apostrophe S? No, no apostrophe. Okay, take that away. Okay, todaysmeet.com backward slash VT Minecraft. See if that works. So Tony yeah. asked if um, if I said 22 educators, and yes, there are 22 people who have signed up on that um, Google spreadsheet since uh, since Vermont Fest. Okay, so let me ask the first question, and we heard a little bit about it, but. Just jump in and tell us what you're doing with Minecraft right now. Um, and once somebody starts talking, then um, raise your hand to, to get yourself heard. And I'll try to shut up. <laughs> Who wants to start? I'll, I'll go first. Um, right now with Minecraft, we are running uh, some lunchtime sessions. So the only, actually not lunchtime, recess time, I guess. Uh, and I feel a little bit badly pulling kids out of, not pulling kids, but letting them come out of recess. But we have so much interest in our school and the middle school kids that they are Mondays and Wednesdays coming in to play Minecraft rather than going outside. I would say I have about 10 kids per grade level who are coming in and playing. Um, as of now, I have one day set up as a survival day and one day set up as a creative day. So the kids get a little bit of both worlds in there, and they are sort of doing what they want. My goal is just to sort of provide this Minecraft um, time as something that they want to create this world. What do they want to make it? How do you want to set it up? Um, and I have a bunch of kids who are helping basically run the server because they know a lot more than I do. Um, we also have an after-school club set up. Uh, and that was actually set up by kids. They actually approached our uh, librarian and said, we want a, we want a gaming club. And 99% of the stuff they do in that club is Minecraft. Uh, and right now, that's, that's where I'm at with Minecraft. You said something about bringing it down to a younger age. Can you yeah. say something about that? Yeah, I, I have, uh, I've had this server running since probably April of last year. And I have fourth graders that have been pestering me for the last month and a half. When are we going to get Minecraft? When are we going to get Minecraft? And even third graders, I will have, oh, you have Minecraft? You know, thinking that it's unbelievable that a teacher would have Minecraft or any interest in it. Um, so I think in January, I'm going to set up a, a fourth grade recess time if they want to come in and play. Cool. Anybody else want to? Talk about what you're doing, Sally. Um, we have been um, we run the Minecraft EDU version, um, so we have um, a server at the middle school, and um, we've run five clubs so far um, since we started in I guess it was March or April of last year. And we mostly mostly play in survival mode, but we leave out the because it's EDU. We can leave out the monsters, um, which you know, which I was I was fine with. Um, so I would be interested if um, Seth would would tell me how would explain to us how they how they're doing with that or what form of survival they're playing in. Um, I discovered that when they played with um, when they played when monsters are, are going on, they 
didn't play um, together so much. So I was I was curious to see if you know what what the impact of having monsters was as a part as opposed to playing collaboratively. Um, this year or this uh, for this session for our after school program, we have a girls only. Um, session because in all of the five that we've run, um, actually, I'm sorry, um, we're now in our seventh um, group of uh, students, and um, in all of the seven or the other six, we only had one girl sign up. So I read um, an article that said that girls would be more likely to play if other girls were playing. So, um, so we we uh, had a, a session that's just just for girls and and um, advertised it as such, and so we have a group of about eight girls who come, and uh, so that's that's been a completely different dynamic, um, and and very interesting. But I'm I'm just kind of curious with Seth's groups, um, you know, what they're doing in creative, and what about the monsters in in survival. Do you mind if I hold off on letting you answer that, Seth? That's, that's fine. Kia, keep going through the through the first question here, and then we'll, we'll yeah, jump around. yeah. Um, and I think that eventually we're going to have to explain the difference between survival and creative. Yeah. Um, anybody, Mike or Karen, you want to jump I, in? I, Karen? I yeah. Um, so last year we had a, a gaming club. And um, I was not, I just was observing because uh, it was held in the computer lab, and that's basically my office with uh, where I uh, am all the time. And I noticed all this fighting and arguing, like you were talking about. And so I went to um, the after-school coordinator this year, and I said I would love to run a Minecraft club, but it you know with, on collaboration, cooperation, and all those great things that we should be doing and we sat down with them on day one and explained it and um, so our club um, we have usually between um, 25 and 30 students we have our own server and um, the high school kids have built a few different worlds so depending on what our uh, what we're doing that day uh, we play in different modes and we added the wither last uh, week so um, so anyway they're you know they're it, it's just it's um, it, they're in teams now too. We have four different teams, so we have four different like um, communities that they work together. So when those monsters come, they help each other. Cool. Thanks. When um, you, you said um, the high school kids do something, what what do you mean? The uh, we have. Um, the high school um, volunteers are the ones that man the servers and um, also walk around the room and you know, uh, you know, I can't get the saddle on my horse, you know, and they're right there, you know, to help them. That's cool. So, anyway, it's collaboration is what and building a community is what our focus is. Yep, I'll, I would love to get back to that. Um, to see how people are using the the game and getting toward whatever kinds of goals you have. Um, Mike, do you want to tell us? I know you're just beginning, but you have yeah. big ideas. Yeah, I, I'll go next. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I, I'm I'm kind of at the other end of the scale, whereas it's, uh, everybody so far on the panel has has been doing it for some time, and I've been the one that has been going kind of nutso trying to say, when do I get this thing started, get it started. Um, finally, we did get the server up and running, and it is stable, so that, that leads me to believe that we can actually start doing something after the holiday break. Um, but prior to getting this, the EDU server set up, um, I had been using some screenshots from the regular Minecraft game, just kind of building around those in terms of getting the kids kind of excited for possibly bringing the game into the classroom. So I I have been using it primarily at this point for, you know, doing introducing concepts, uh, mostly some math and language arts and, and style concepts using a picture or something from a Minecraft game that I would do at home, and then 
just take a shot of it and then use it that way. So that's what I call my static Minecraft mode, where we're not actually playing the game. The game's not even on in the class, but I'm bringing in pieces of it just to kind of get some little extra motivation from the group. So my next step is to... Uh, I actually worked worked in a, uh, a uh, independent study setting this up through the, the grad center, and my goal was to get the server set up and running and actually start some after-school activities and because of so many other issues that came up, the little delay here and there, that the club will, or the, I don't want to call it a club, the group, after school group, will be able to uh, actually get started probably the second week of January, I hope, once I get the launcher loaded on all the computers that we're going to be using. Um, so that's, I'm kind of at that end of it, just getting going on it. But we're, we're, I think we're still going to, I think it's going to be a, a pretty big hit. We've got a lot of Minecraft players. Um, and I've seen, it, you know, I've seen it used as far down as first and second grade in other countries. So I think it's pretty good potential for a lot of age groups. So it should be kind of exciting. That wasn't too long-winded, was it? <laughs> Not at all. No. <laughs> um. All right, so I'm going to move off of my original intention, and uh, can we talk about survival mode and monsters? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just to, I'll, I'll jump in and explain that quick, and then answer Sally's sort of question about how the kids are dealing with monsters. Um, there's there's a couple modes in Minecraft. Uh, one of them is creative, where you are able to just sort of create whatever you want. You have access to every single um, block that's there, every single tool, every single um, uh, every single thing that's available in Minecraft to use. Um, there are monsters that are there at night. They don't hurt you. They, they don't do anything to you. Um, they do uh, spawn and, and come out so you can see them. Um, but that's sort of that's sort of the creative mode. There's survival mode as well, where I think it's every 10 minutes Minecraft will go into night and monsters will appear. Zombies, uh, creepers, which are the things that explode. Um, I've seen all kinds of stuffed Eat animals. In those. My son son has a stuffed animal in one of those. Um, so uh, in survival, you actually have to survive. So you have to build a house that will protect you from the zombies and monsters from attacking you. Uh, you, you make a sword so that you can fight the zombies. Um, you can you know, keep all those things away, uh, and it's just sort of, it's just sort of the, uh, the the natural pattern of the day that you have to make sure that you are well enough protected. Uh, you mine down for different things to make a better sword so that you can protect yourself better, um, and that's sort of the difference between the two. Uh, what we've been doing, Sally, is I have been taking my server and setting it on Mondays and Tuesdays to create it. Uh, so the kids have that feel for it, and then it switches back Wednesday to survival mode for the rest of the week. Uh, and what I find is that I like the... I, the kids are do fine with the monsters. There's no problem with that whatsoever. Um, you know, they, they like to fight them. They like to do all that stuff. Um, and also, with my, with my server, I really um, have tried to let the kids take control of it. I don't know... You know, I, I'm I'm thinking back to what um, Michael was saying is that he's sort of a, a new person setting this up. I feel like I'm the same way. Um, I'm letting the kids do a lot of the stuff, uh, and if I control it too much, I feel like they'll lose interest in it. So by having the monsters, by having it as survival most of the time, the kids are really um, receptive and they really do work together. I have a bunch of kids that are. Uh, called op, which means they can control things. They have more power than a regular player, and you know we we set them up so that they can, if they're they're playing with another kid, they can make those other kids in creative mode whenever they feel like it. So, you know, there's that there's that working together. There's that there's that you know collaboration. Even though there are these monsters out there trying to trying to you know kill them. Um, so I haven't found it to be a problem at all. In fact, it's it's kind of fun because then you do see the kids working together and helping each other out. Um, Susan is trying to join the video call, and um, I know that Sally probably wants to follow up with Seth. 
And at some point, I just want to acknowledge that Tony's asked how difficult it is to set up your own server. So we'll get back to that in just a moment. So Sally, do you want to follow up? Yeah, I um, I would have to say I didn't spend enough time um, with the whole monster. We we played with the monsters for a little while and. Um, and the thing that, that um, I noticed was that a lot of the students were, um, you know, who were very new at Minecraft, abandoned buildings, uh, building their, their structures, and simply went after them um, as much as they could. Uh, and they were just, they were chasing them down. Um, and not really fortifying defenses or anything along those lines. Um, and not really playing with the other students so much, but I can honestly say I didn't give it enough that much of a um, of a trial, and and so hearing you talk about it in this way makes me think that I really should give that give that a try. We only play after school um, at at our middle school. We only play once um, once a week, so. Um, I feel like we have to make it count, whereas if we play daily, I would probably feel like it would be okay to, to make that switch. So maybe I need to rethink how we play and how often. Sally, do you have the, the Minecraft server just running during those clubs, or do they have access to it at other times? It's running all the time. Okay. Um, so yeah, it would be possible. I'm not at the middle school all the time. I travel around, so there would have to be somebody um, willing to to take that on. Um, since I wouldn't be there, which you know now it makes me feel like I want to be there. Well, I already <laughs> want to be there. I always want to play. But yeah. uh, but it's it, it's a wonderful thing to consider, and I, I like the idea of partial creative and partially survival. Do you switch worlds in order to do that? Nope. You just keep it on the same? I keep it on exactly the same, so they have access to all their houses, they have access to everything. And there are kids that, when it's creative days, they'll stock up on all the best of the The diamonds? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, but you know, it's it's sort of I, I feel like at least I'm hitting both of those areas for those kids, and um, you know they they seem to like it. They know the schedule. They they know the pattern, um, and you know I I could probably log on right now and find two or three kids playing right now on the server. So, well, that that leads us to maybe I'm sure we're going to bounce around a bit, but. EDU version, bucket servers, um, there are different ways to go about this. I know that a lot of teachers use the standard um, Minecraft version. And I don't really know what a bucket server is. I looked it up when you mentioned it, Seth. Um, and I know that Sally and Mike are using the EDU version. I don't know what you're doing, Karen. So. Could somebody explain some of the differences, uh, or at least explain the one that you use? And the, hi, Susan. I'm glad you're here. We hi. can't hear you if you're speaking. I'm here. Oh, Hello. we can hear you. We can. Anybody? Um, I mean, I can speak to the bucket server, because that's what I have set up. Um, and really, the way that the way that I had this set up was, I saw some kids playing Minecraft, uh, and I was talking to a couple of kids, and they were saying, "Oh, we should do a Minecraft club." So I said, "Okay," and I actually had a um, a student who had a server set up at his house that his father helped him with, and so I asked the dad if he would come in at lunchtime and help me out, and he came in and set up the server. Um, I know, I think it was just Anthony who was asking about the, the server in the uh, Today's Meet. And I literally had that parent come in, and he showed me. It was like, okay, I think I can handle this. And there's been ups and downs. But basically, a bucket server is 
just the Minecraft server, but what the, these um, these people all on their own have done is uh, expanded the, the regular server so that you can add in different plugins to the server. Um, I don't know exactly how the, the EDU server works. I actually am just getting a license for that now, so I'm going to play around with that. Um, but the bucket server, there is a whole community out there that is adding these plugins. Uh, and what I have is I have a group of six or seven kids, fifth grade through eighth grade, who are suggesting new plugins. And they say, hey, we're having a problem right now with creepers blowing up things and destroying things. So they say, how about we get this, this um, plugin to be able to make it so that the creepers can't destroy the blocks? So I say, sure, let's try it. So we download it. I, you know, toss it in there. Um, I have a couple kids that I just say, hey, go into the go into the server and add in, you know, that new thing that you were just talking about. And they know more about it than I do. It takes me a little while to figure things out, but they just go right in and, and take care of it. Um, so basically, it's it's the the same thing as a regular Minecraft server, but you have this ability to add in these different things. I can go in then within these these plugins and change the. Um, change the uh, settings on it so I really have the ability to make a sign that will teleport somebody and that's a separate plugin that's added in there. Um, kids like to have money, they like to have those factions set up so those are all the types of things that they are setting up within this um, and it's sort of um, you know, Sounds I don't like you have some of the administrative abilities that you have with the EDU mod. Yeah I, I'm guessing it's fairly similar um, I'm guessing it's fairly similar, um, and uh, you know I'm just Sorry. letting. Go ahead. I was just going to say, just letting the the kids sort of run it. You know, I have that group of core kids, and they're, well, we're having a problem with this. This person's using bad language. All right, so let's talk about you know a plugin that will at least record the bad language in there, and then we can decide how to to deal with those kids, mm -hmm. um, things like that. So that's sort of what a bucket server is. Karen, so, what are you using? Well, I call I, I use a vanilla server, which probably is like a bucket server, but um, I it it, it allows um, you. Go, we went on into a Minecraft wiki, and we, we um, just was able to um, you know follow the instructions. That's what we did. We followed the instructions and wrote the code, and it's just a blank sheet, and we can go in and change the code when we want to add different things, and then the ops people like Seth has, um, can go in and teleport and do all these different things and uh, we can we write code as we're going along. I that didn't, sounds uh, scary. Uh, <laughs> the, the, it's, it really, it's, it, it's not. It's, it's <laughs> I think it's simpler. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Sally so. or Mike, you, do you want to talk about what the EDU is? Sure. Um, the EDU version um, provides some of that functionality already um, for teleport um, and blocking students. Um, the teacher uh, dashboard that comes with it allows us to um, um, you know, teleport students from one place to another. They can't teleport themselves. We can put in teleport blocks we can put in all sorts of informational signs and so forth for them. Um, we can freeze individual students. We can freeze all of the students. Um, we can freeze chat if we needed to. Um, we can uh, enable health and hunger. We can... Um, I haven't seen how to put individual students into creative mode. Um, so I'd be interested to see if that's possible. We can decide whether we're going to allow weather or not. We can um, decide if we want night and day. Um, some of the, sometimes when we're building, it's it's difficult to build and when it's um, night. So sometimes we'll just go with solid day. Um, so some of the functionality that Seth was talking about comes built in. I've never attempted to put any mods into the EDU version. I don't know. There are some that, that obviously already came with it. I'd be interested to see how much, um, how much else I could do 
to add to it. Susan, your mic is muted, I think. I just didn't want to create any extra noise. I was saying hello to my husband. <laughs> yes, I not seeing um, you today. <laughs> you, you missed the introductions. Right. Um, but I'll just quickly say that, that Seth, Sally, and Karen have um, a lot going. Right. And Mike has just gotten his server set up, but he hasn't brought kids into it yet. Right. And Excellent. I think you're just a little bit behind that. I am. Uh, are and you I'm, thinking of doing the EDU version, or yeah. are you even at that point of knowing which way you're going? Well, we will go the EDU version initially. You know, I'm listening to Seth, and I'm interested in his experience because it's very different than what we were shooting for. Um, we are looking for, I guess, a controlled environment to begin with because we have some ideas of using it with classroom curriculum more aligned with what Mike's doing. Um, but there's probably a group of older kids that would like to approach it from the perspective that Seth has with his group. So it's good to hear what, these, what everyone's doing. I just um, watched or I, I attended the unconference that was that I announced in the IT list and only one session but it was pretty remarkable and it was Marian um, no Marianne Malstrom talking about how they're using it in her school and I I'll, I'll send out the link for the YouTube version of it um, but she their school uses it. <laughs> okay, Mike. <laughs> um, their school uses it in all of their curriculum and after school as well. And they do, they use the vanilla version um, and they use monsters. And so it was very interesting to see all of the, the button pushing issues that um, I thought wouldn't be done, they were doing, and they were doing it still in a controlled way where teachers had an influence over what kids were doing. So, Mike, I pick you. Thank you, James. <laughs> you know how I am in a group situation. I'll just kind of hang back for a while. Um, I'm looking at the, the EDU version, and I'm thinking people are generally... Wait a, wait a second. I have to turn off my mic so you don't hear the train. I already heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think people are, are, when you're looking for which version to use, a lot of people are doing EDU version because I think they want that piece of the control because if you're going to do a curriculum, you're thinking classroom and you're thinking using it because it's more like a classroom when you have more control over it, which is a typical teacher idea. Um, but I'm seeing that people are using it, the EDU as well as they're using the what I all call the commercial version um, in lots of different ways. Um, so I, and and I'm, I'm amazed at how much they're both being used at this point. Um, I heard, or I read the other day, that they're, they're also developing a, a mod for outer space Minecraft so that you'll be actually be able to do some studies, scientific studies, in outer space about things in outer space, of course. Um, but I think that um, most of what I'm hearing from different people right on the panel at this point is is how you, you went about it and I'm wondering um, what you got with regards to feedback from administration and even parents about their kids using Minecraft at all in school and how that is that really are they concerned about that or something like that but I'd be interested in that piece of it if we get to that at some point today um, so. anybody want to respond to it about that? Well, I'd, I'd, li I'd like to start young. And I feel like there might be a little bit. I guess it was really taken early on with a video of uh, second graders and they were in tutorial world. <laughs> and it was pretty amazing and a nice area to kind of introduce them to some of the skill sets that they would use later on. So I see us using the edu version in that manner. 
when I first brought up the idea of bringing a, a video game, per se, to, to the classroom, I had a number of parents kind of weirded out, freaked out that, really? <laughs> um, and I told them that it would be a little more controlled than what the kids are, are used to using, which which is why I'm keep, I would keep the EDU version on hand, but um, I think it's a new concept for them, and and they're 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 kind of nervous about it. As as administration is a little nervous about it because they they don't want people to think we're just pushing games in school. But as I tell people, I said I'm studying game based learning, and there's a lot of promise out there. So I keep feeding people information about cool things, like you know how do you do an opera in Minecraft? We've seen that. Steph? I, I was going to say that I have I have probably within the school day during those lunch times I have anywhere from fifty to sixty kids coming in, and the only thing that I've heard from a parent um, was that they love Minecraft because their two kids that they have actually are working together in Minecraft playing Hunger Games, and they, she feels like it's at least brought them closer. I haven't awesome. had any parents worry about it. I have heard one person say, "Well, isn't it bad taking them out of recess?" To you know, to do this <laughs> Minecraft, and you know, I, I do feel badly on those really nice days when it's really beautiful outside. But at the same time, I also feel like it's it's an opportunity for those kids who aren't going to be athletic, they don't want to be outside anyway, for them to shine in another way. Hmm. Um, and I also, uh, you know, I see it playing into the curriculum already, where those kids are um, who have to make a cell in fifth grade. I've had a bunch of them who are making the cell in Minecraft, and they're that much more engaged. So giving them another opportunity, another way to actually use Minecraft in the classroom, just as something that they could use, is is a benefit right there. Um, and and once you start showing parents the um, the creations that they've made, and the time that they've put into it, um, you know I think of Minecraft as Legos, just on the computer. And you know, I I would never say don't play with Legos. They're not bad. You know, they're they're bad for you. So that's sort of my my philosophy. And you know, it's it's been a really positive experience at our school so far. Right. Any negative reaction from your folks, Karen? Uh, no, I think it's because we do it only after school. Um. So um, it, during the day, um, our computer. <laughs> Can you hear me all right? Because something yes. changed. Okay. Um, the um, during the day there are just too many. Um, uh, P, you know, we teach all day long. Our recesses overlap, so there's always teaching going on. So Minecraft is only um, used um, after school. Right now, I would love the teachers. You know, once we we uh, maybe can show. I'm hoping that they'll come and see it, and um, you know, and then start thinking about it. But at least. Uh, they're allowed to um, come anytime after school, and uh, but then, like I said, on once a week we have the club, but we haven't had anybody say anything, you know, negative about the club or anything. Now, a lot of my understanding is that a lot of schools do start after school for one reason because it's a way uh, to sort of prove the concept. And then gradually move into school. Um, but I see that Sally wants to raise her hand, and if you want to comment about that or just go in a different direction, feel free. I wanted to just comment on the um, the um, negative concerns um, that we were just talking about, and um, the only thing I wanted to mention was that we had some parents who were concerned about the player versus player aspect. And we had um, taken that out, um, and they were the the parents who asked were much relieved about that, um, and were amazed. We had an open house at, where we showed off the structures that the students had been making, and they were amazed at what they had done. Um, and so I think that they were really enthused by what they were seeing, and I think they felt much better um, about their child playing um, in a group as opposed to going home and playing by themselves. We've also had students who said, 
that playing Minecraft by themselves wasn't <coughs> anywhere near as, as much fun, and they wanted to play at school, and that's why they kept coming back, because they could play with, with each other, and they before had been playing alone. So that was, that was very gratifying to hear. Uh, I like to think that we're in a very interesting group of people in the sense of wanting to use this particular activity within a school setting. And I think that as we start with after school groups, clubs, and kind of work our way into, um, I'm kind of surprised at my own district where I think I may be the only teacher that I know of out of 300 teachers that has any idea that this game has such educational value. I, I don't know. I'm just saying that, but I don't know. But um, I, I think we're, we're, we're at a forefront, at least in this country in some ways, but that the uh, countries outside of the U.S. have really taken us on for the last few years. And I've, I've seen, I'm always amazed at the things that I see on, on the Internet about what they've done. So I'm really kind of looking forward to hoping to get part of a curriculum within this activity and showing folks this is what your kids can really do when they maybe not able to do this very well with a paper and pencil but look at the great thing they can do so it's kind of exciting a little philosophy there sorry <laughs> we have just a, a few minutes left and we we now have five people watching us and I know that we have other people who will be watching later on I want to remind the people who are watching that we have a chat going if you have any last minute questions. Um, and the chat is at todaysmeet.com forward slash VT Minecraft. And given the fact that we are among a group of people who are sort of at the forefront of this, and I would say we, we currently know of um, about 17 other people who, in the state of Vermont who are really interested in this, and I hope that we can gather more. I'm sure there are others that we haven't heard from. So if you know of anybody who would like to be part of this group and um, participate in sharing, uh, please get in touch with me or any of us. Um, what what are we willing to do to help move this along? And I open this question up to the people who are participating in the today's meet as well. And I did see that that Tony said that his high school students love to create stuff, and if they can somehow create stuff for your younger kid servers, that might be a, a cool way to collaborate across schools. Mm -hmm. But how can we help each other? You know, I think um, I think just sharing things like this. You know, I I see the I think it was was it Tony in the chat. Somebody was asking about how hard it is to set up a server, and it's one of those things. Just knowing that it is a little bit daunting, but knowing that you know there's there's help out there, there's people out there to to help and do different things. You know, I think that's that's the first step is to make sure people know that there is there are people out there who can help. Um, and just sharing the stuff that we're doing, you know, I think that's gonna that's gonna allow people to say, oh wow, I could actually use something like this. And you know, I just think the biggest thing that I think of this is, even it's though hard. I'm I'm not using it for um, you know direct class instruction, the engagement that I see from Minecraft is amazing, and getting those kids engaged is what we need to do as as teachers these days. I think you, you bring up a good point. It's about engaging the students. Um, and as a classroom teacher, I'm looking at faces that sometimes are not very engaged. But when I flash a Minecraft picture, suddenly I've got all eyes totally where they need to be. And they're, they are amazingly engaged in just that possible moment. But I, I've seen some really good things with that. So. Uh, I think that's going to be a very important piece. Engagement means good listening, and good listening means we're going to learn a little bit more than when we're not. <laughs> so, you bring up that good point. So. Um, and 
a lot of people say um, that anytime you do an authentic activity, learning happens. And those of us who play games or have worked in virtual environments know that uh, acting out those activities, even when it's virtual, is more authentic than just sitting and listening about it. Um, I wanted to mention that Don Taylor, who is in today's meet, um, has said that they've incorporated Minecraft into their ancient civilization studies. Um, and so I'm hoping that we will eventually hear more from him. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, I'm reading it out loud to you, I hope you don't mind. We've mirrored the online civilizations with our study of Egypt, Egyptian Indus River, monumental architecture and, uh-oh, <laughs> to scroll. Urbanization. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there's a lot of people are talking in the chat about how there are a lot of very interesting time-lapse videos about the creation of structures, particularly uh, structures that are replicas of real-life um, historical buildings. So what's our next step as a group, those of you who in today's meet and those of you who are, who are here? Um, and then we have to wrap up. I think we should play together. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Is there, I've never played through a server. Is that something that maybe Seth could set up in a way for us to get in there? I, I can share my server that the kids play on, and you can actually see and go around uh, and see what all, all the kids have made. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to share that out, uh, you know, so that, that teachers can jump on and see what all the kids are doing. I think that would be a, a great next event. Is yeah. if we could all get into your server and we could also do it in this format where I'm sharing our screen of yeah, what's going absolutely. on and people who can't come can watch. Sure. Is that all right? Sounds wonderful. And now, uh, is there an issue? Is there an issue with the the server address and would we need to create another one just because it does allow us to get into somewhere where technically we're probably not supposed to be <laughs> in some ways. Um, but I don't know. EDU I, has codes um, for anybody who wants to connect um, directly to Minecraft itself. If 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 an, uh, the person who um, got the licensing for EDU, if they never go outside of EDU, they don't need the codes. But they would have um, given you codes because when you purchase Minecraft, you're not just purchasing the um, EDU server. Um, mod, you're also purchasing Minecraft itself. So they sent um, codes. So uh, I, I don't I've know never... what you're saying, Sally. <laughs> what are the codes for? The codes are to access um, a Minecraft server, a regular Minecraft a server. Regular Minecraft server. Yes, because so... people who don't have Minecraft EDU can't access a Minecraft EDU server. So when we purchased the EDU um, server mod and the licensing to run that, um, we purchased 25 licenses, for example, and we received 25 codes. Mm -hmm. And so the codes, we've never had to use them. But if we want to go on somebody else's Minecraft server, that's what the codes are supposed to allow us to do. I've never tried it. so. Sally, just to just to speak the way that this works, I don't have the Minecraft codes. Every kid that comes to my Minecraft club owns Minecraft. Right. I'm only now buying, uh, I think I'm buying five licenses so that I can set them up on computers in my computer labs. Um, our kids have, we have a one-to-one -one computer uh, take-home program, so the kids all have their computers. So when when the way it works is uh, if you want to join a, a multiplayer server, you have to authenticate with the Minecraft 
company, the Mojang company itself, to say, yes, I've bought this license. So that's all the codes are for, is just as an authentication that, oh, yes, you do have a Minecraft license. Um, and it should work out perfectly fine. Um, but, yeah, Jane, I'm happy to set up a, you know, a time where we can play, get a bunch of people on there. I can have up to 50 people at a time on my server if that actually does work. I've never had that many on at once. Um, but, you know, there's lots of stuff that we can do like that. I can even have, depending on if we if we do a time, a set, you know, time that, hey, we're going to be on, I can have a bunch of kids who will be able to go around and, you know, give tours of what they, they've made, um, what they've done. Uh, and, you know, there's parts that are a mess and there's parts that are really quite amazing. <laughs> Um, I think that would be a great next step. Yeah. Okay. Oops. Um, so, um, I, I guess we should wrap up. I do want to say that, um, that Don is proposing a variety of great options for curricular type activities, so we have to get him in um, definitely into our next event. Uh, let's see, what else is that, was I going to say? Oh, well, I've emailed all 22 of us, and we all have each other's email addresses now. And if anybody wants to invite other people to, to sign up, um, I'm trying to read today's meet and talk to you at the same time. I'm sorry. At any rate, you all have each other's email addresses, and if you have any suggestions of how I can organize this in a better way, um, should we have a, a Google Plus community or mm -hmm. any other suggestions, if you want to create a Google Doc that we work with, I'm amenable to, to any of that. Uh, I think a Google Plus community would be a nice environment to work in. We can post things like what we're, what what our server configurations are, what's working well, how many accounts you can host at one time. I mean, there could be a several different discussions going on, but all mm -hmm. in one place. We can try that as well. Yeah. So thank you to the five of you for joining me tonight and thank you Don and Tony for talking to us in today's meet mm -hmm. and anybody else who's watching thank you and I'll be in touch I'm gonna stop the broadcast now as soon as I can figure out which of these mice are mine <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>